Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us for this live stream episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I can't thank you enough for joining us for the show. In most cases, Dogman eyewitnesses report things that would point towards Dogman just being flesh and blood creatures that are out there in the woods trying to scratch out a living. But every once in a while, you have an eyewitness come by the way that talks about certain things that point towards the possibility that maybe these guys aren't just flesh and blood creatures out there, animals out there trying to scratch out a living. Tonight's guest, Dave, is a perfect example of that. Without wasting any more time, though, let's get him in here so we can find out more. Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, you know, you're welcome. Dave, please give us a brief bio on yourself. Uh, well, my name is David. Uh, I am uh, in my 40s. <laughs> I work in customer service and uh, in the sugar industry, sugar supply industry. Um, I live in the south suburbs of Chicago. Nothing real, super remarkable. Um, in, uh, into camping with my family and being outdoors. And uh, really, that's just, uh, that's, that's just about it. You're a very nice guy who's obviously very well-rounded. And <laughs> if you just spoke with someone on the street, I mean, you'd be probably the last person that you'd ever expect to have experiences like the ones you're going to share with us tonight to talk about. But these experiences, they happen to anyone, any place. There's no rhyme nor reason. So yeah, it's pretty hard to figure out. Dave, all of your encounters except one have strong supernatural elements to them. With mm -hmm. that in mind, though, are you convinced that dogmen are supernatural beings? Um, you know, uh, and, and since I've had these uh, encounters and, and been doing a little bit more research on them, I, I think that um, from stuff that I've read, I, I think they could be, they could, it could kind of go either way. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard many instances where people are, see them and, and, like you described, flesh and blood. Uh, actual physical animals, um, but then in, in the case of, of mine, more more of the supernatural aspect of it. Um, so, I, you know, it's your guess is as good as mine. Um, I mean, I've I've always been uh, open to to believing in, in you know, and that, that there's more out there than we than than we really know. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely definitely things uh, living behind the shadows that. Uh, that, that that are not explained, uh, in my opinion, anyway. <laughs> there definitely are things out there like that, unfortunately. Speaking of strange things on my other show, one of my other shows, My Paranormal Experience, I've got a couple of good guests lined up. One of those guests is going to be coming on and talking about a Batman that he saw. He was... Looking through his telescope late one night, I guess he was stargazing, maybe checking out the moon or something like that, when all of a sudden he noticed this strange creature flying really high in the sky that it looked like a cross between a bat and a man. If that's not unnerving, and if that doesn't make the hair in your butt stand up, what he talks about happening after he noticed it definitely will. So, yeah, that episode should be airing soon. Maybe next week, if not next Friday, then the Friday after that. It's a, an episode you definitely don't want to miss. Yeah. But back on point, Dave, when someone new comes into your life, how long does it normally take before you start trying to decide when and if you're going to tell them about your dogman encounters? Oh, uh, you know, honestly, it's not not something I usually lead with. Um, and, and you know, if if I do get convinced uh, to to talk about it, because obviously there are people in my life that I that I have told, you know, close friends and you know, told around campfire stories. And I think that some of them probably think that it's just some spooky thing that I tell. You know, when they're like, "Hey, David, tell your tell about your you know your your experiences." I get uh, mixed reactions. You know, sometimes people are like, "Oh yeah, you know, that's that's that <laughs> that that really happened." Um, but, but like I said, it's, it's not usually something that I, that I, that I lead with, um, because I have gotten quite a bit of skepticism from people on it. Um, so it's, it's, it's something I save for, for those that are, that are closest to me that, you know, that, that are really interested in, in learning more about it or, or, you know, asking genuine questions about it and, and knowing more about it rather than just, you know, something spooky to tell around the campfire. I can definitely understand why you're careful about who you tell about your experiences to. Yeah, that's that's a good move. 
<laughs> you started having dog man encounters at an early age. How old were you though when you had that first encounter? Oh, it was right about nine, nine or ten. It was about in the right around the, in the late eighties, so like eighty seven or eighty eight was the first uh, first one that I remember. That's an early start, a really early start. What's been the most profound change in your life that was directly related to you having that experience at such a young age? Um, well, I mean, obviously, it's it, you know, it, 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 just talking about it and, and just kind of coming to terms with um, you know having had the experiences. Um, it is definitely, which we can probably get into a little later, definitely changed um, my dreams because I, I still, I do, you know, when I've uncovered more, more memories about them, um, I do uh, dream about them sometimes. So that's something that's, um, I wouldn't say newer, but, but newer, newer mm -hmm. since, since I really kind of started d digging into it a little bit more. Has it been a while since you've had a dogman related nightmare? Um, I wouldn't necessarily call them nightmares. Um, I would say that they're, you know, they're uh, it's, it's dreams that that where they, you know, are present. Um, but no, I mean, it probably honestly the last one that I can remember was within the last couple of months. Um, but. Uh, uh, it, they're not, they're not always nightmares. I should, I should put it that way. Um, they're sometimes just, um, just regular, regular dreams where they, where the dogmen are, uh, are present, I should say. So it sounds like you're not still plagued by these nightmares. No, no, not, not, it's not always, not always unpleasant. Oh, thank goodness for that. Yeah, that's a lot more than some eyewitnesses can say. Right. That's a lot more than most eyewitnesses can say. So, yeah, if that's the case, that's definitely a good thing. Yeah. Definitely. Well, Dave, please tell us about your encounters now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so, like I said uh, a few minutes ago, like uh, the first one that I really remember was um, when I was um, about nine or ten. Um, it was uh, summertime. Um, so we were, my family was having a, a cookout at my grandma's house, which we spent a lot of time out there. So it was uh, probably around dusk, uh, a little bit, a little bit earlier than that, maybe because there was still a decent amount of light in the sky. Um, I was just playing ball with my cousin and the way that my grandma's house was set up, um, you know, down her side yard, she had a, uh, old chain link fence around the whole thing. And the, the side yard led back to the backyard where there was, um, uh, an unused, uh, an alley. So it was, you know, kind of overgrown with weeds and, and brush and stuff. And, um, us kids were not allowed to go back there because, you know, it was just, she thought it was dangerous you know, broken bottles and things like that. She didn't live in the best neighborhood to be honest. Um, so we we're playing ball in the yard and, and my cousin tossed it a little bit too high or, you know, or too, too wide. For, and I kind of rolled to the back. So I ran back to, to grab it. And, um, as I was picking it up, I noticed that uh, there was some rustling in the in the weeds back there in the alley, and of course, being nine and ten years old, I had to go take a peek and see what it was. Um, and what I originally thought it was was an injured uh, animal um, because I could see that it was um, from where I was standing from my vantage point. I could see that it was uh, dark, kind of brown fur, uh, and so you know I got a little closer because then I was concerned it could have been one of the neighbors dogs or or something like that um and as i kind of crept a little closer uh, i noticed that it was much bigger than i originally thought it was uh so it was um you know about the size of a, of a man uh and and so i sort of stood there and looked at it for a few minutes just kind of trying to wrap my 10 year old mind around it uh, and i noticed that it, it seemed to be injured because it wasn't standing up it was lying kind of in a prone position and it um it was using the fence um sort of kind of kind of hard to describe but uh, think about you know grabbing you're grabbing you know your hands with the chain link fence and sort of dragging yourself along with it you know that that's really what it was doing uh and i could see that it was covered in fur and then its hands were um reminiscent of a man's but more more animal like um, I didn't get a great look at the the you know the head or the or the face or anything, but it definitely wasn't um, just a normal person. 
Um, and so I, you know, stood there and sort of watched it for what seemed like forever. And it was at that point, that was one of the most terrifying things <laughs> that I'd ever experienced. Uh, and I just sort of watched it and I just, I just, I really couldn't process it. Uh, you know, just watching this, this seemingly injured uh, monster really is what it, what it seemed like, um, you know, kind of dragging itself along. Uh, and so then after a little while, I ran up front to, to grab my cousin. And when we went back there, um, it couldn't have been more than a minute or two later. I mean, uh, it was, it was no longer there. Like, and we were of course not going to go back into the alley because we weren't allowed to. So, um, but yeah, just, it just wasn't there anymore. And oh, we, you know, talked about it, of course, as, as kids do. And he was just a little bit older than me. So, you know, he's calling me, of course, telling me that I'm lying, that I'm making it up, that I'm just trying to scare him. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, I, I described it to him and told him what it was. And, um, you know, of course, we made plans to go back there and take a look and see what it was. But it never, that never materialized. Um, and, and then it just sort of, you know, kind of fell out of memory. Like, I didn't think about it much after that. Um, and that was that was that was the first time that I that I saw something, um, and that was one of the. I guess, I mean, I don't want to say one of the only because it was it's hard to tell you know with the other encounters that we get into, but it was it's it was one of the times that I that I knew it was like physical, like it was an actual something that was that was there. Like if I had reached out, I would have been able to touch it. Uh, that it would have been a physical, like you said, flesh and flesh and blood being. Um, but that was, yeah, that was, that was the first time. All right. Take your time. And whenever you're ready, please yeah. tell us about the other ones. Yeah. And then, um, so the next time that I, that I have a, a, a solid memory of it was I was in high school. So I'm thinking probably, uh, 1993, 94, somewhere around there. Um, I'd come home from school and this was, probably fall. I think that I had been, uh, I was going to go to some sort of an event after school. So I came home and, uh, you know, grabbed myself a snack and, you know, got into, into my room. I don't think my parents were home yet, but, um, got in my room and, uh, just was going to take a nap before a friend came to pick me up or, or whatever was the, the plan. Um, so I had my bedroom door, my lights were off and my bedroom door was open. So the light from the, from the rest of the house was coming in. So there was, you know, I could still see the, the, the interior of my room. It wasn't pitch black or anything. And I just kind of dozed off. Um, and, uh, when I did wake up, I'm not sure how much time had passed. It didn't seem like very, very much when I did wake up, um, the room seemed, uh, occupied, <laughs> I guess I should say, um, and I was having difficult, like I, I could, I could still see light, but it was, it was kind of obscured. And so it took me a few minutes to figure out what was really, I say a few minutes, probably just a few seconds to, to figure out what was going on. Um, and then, and when my, when, when, I guess when my eyes kind of got accustomed to what it was, um, I noticed that there were um, probably about four or five of these dog men um, standing around my bed. So uh, there were um they were you know standing upright like like human um but they I, this time i could see their their heads and they were you know they had the long snout um kind of taller standing up ears um they were they were all very dark furred uh i don't remember if they had tails because i can't I, I don't remember if i could i just don't have that either that memory isn't, doesn't exist anymore or i just didn't see that that part of them um, it was a little foggy, but that time I, I, I didn't feel fear. Um, but I did have like a vague feeling of like being observed and, and sort of left with a hard to describe, but almost like a feeling of, I don't know, just being, I, I hesitate to use the word violated, but, but observed in, in sort of a, a, almost a threatening way is what it felt like. Um, so it was just kind of hard to pinpoint how, you know, the, 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 how that feeling was. Um, so I sort of laid there and, and, and watched them a little bit and, 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 you know, they, I mean, they were just observing is really how, the best way I can describe it. Um, and then I, I either dozed back off or, you know, just kind of closed my eyes or, 
um, and just to kind of think this can't possibly be happening. Um, and then, and then I heard my my mother was in the house at that point. I remember hearing her in the kitchen. Uh, and when I when I opened my eyes, um, I was alone. So the room was empty. Um, you know, then my mom comes in. I think she you know checked on me to see what my plans were. Uh, and then I think I just sort of wrote it off as as a nightmare. Um, but now you know now that I'm I'm an adult and I've kind of done a little bit more research. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely have, have, I know that they were there. <laughs> I know that, 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 that was a, an actual experience that happened. Um, and like I said, the, 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 the strange, like uh, feeling of being observed was, was rather unnerving at that, at that point. And I can still kind of remember what that felt like. Um, and then the, the, the next, I guess, saying more recent is is relative because it's still probably about ten years ago, um, or more like I'm sorry, twenty years ago. I forget how old I am sometimes. Um, flash forward to, to that time, uh, I, I live on my own at this point, um, in my and I'm in in the same neighborhood as as where my grandmother lived and where my where my parents live and all that. But I I have my own house, and um, after work, I am. I'm out with some friends and my boyfriend at the time, this is my husband now, we um, were heading home um, and just kind of chatting along the way. And um, the neighborhood that I grew up in was sort of wooded. So this, you know, you got this kind of long stretch of road that's, you know, got houses on one side and a lot of woods on the other. And um, so we're driving down, heading towards the house and it's a little like misty, kind of foggy out. Um, and up ahead, uh, I can't even tell you that what, you know, what the distance was, my headlights hit on something. Uh, and at first I thought it was like just some trash or something like, you know, some debris in the road. Um, but as we get a little bit closer, uh, I, I, I think, oh no, that's gotta be, that's an animal. You know, I thought maybe someone had hit a deer cause we had a lot of deer around. Uh, and then I get closer and I, uh, even, even closer, I'm, I'm slowed down at this point. And at this point he's, he's noticing that I'm slowing down. And then he notices that there's something in the road as well. And, and then I think, oh gosh, it's a dog. You know, I mean, it's cause I can see the head and, and, and at this point I can see the tail and it's it, it sort of looks like it's standing there, but I think, oh, it must be injured. So I'm you know feeling sad at that point. Um, and then I, as, as we get slowed down to, to nearly a stop, um, it uh, sort of looks over at us, uh, and and it's it's big. It uh, it stands up uh, on you know on, on its legs, and it's it's got to be like over six feet tall, um, more like grayish fur this time. Um, but the the you know snout and the ears, um, it's got a it's got a tail. Uh, I can see the the legs, um, whereas before it was. I wasn't able to see that this time. It just, it's kind of the, the epitome of what you would think of as a dog man. It just looks, looks sort of like a werewolf, but I've never really referred to them as that, but um, and it just sort of turns and, and, and looks at us. And at this point I'm, I'm at a dead stop. We're not talking. We're just, you know, kind of in this standoff. Um, and then it turns to sort of like what it, what I would think would be like a motion to run, like it's going to you know dart off, um, and then it just sort of wasn't there anymore. Like it was almost like the mist kind of blew uh, you know around a little bit, and then it just it wasn't there. Um, so not really like watching it run away. It just was there, and then it wasn't. Um, so it, it felt while it was standing there, it felt like it was physical. It looked like it was physical, um, but, but then but then it wasn't anymore. It wasn't there anymore. And so I turned to him and I said, before I say anything, I need you to tell me exactly what you saw. Uh, and he described, he described exactly what, what I said to you. He saw the, the, the thing he thought it was uh, an injured animal because you know, he didn't notice it until, until we were a little closer to it. Uh, and then he told me what he saw. And that was the time that sort of triggered the rest of the memories for me. Uh, it all sort of flooded back. Like we went, we went back to the house and, and talked about it a little bit more. And um, I remembered the time when I was at my grandma's house. And I remember the time that I was, that I was in my bedroom uh, when I was in high school. Um, I did remember a few times when I, when I had uh, dreams of those 
encounters, those specific encounters. Um, and then it, it triggered a deeper, sort of weirder memory. Um, well, I, you know, I, some people consider it weird. So my aunt and uncle were pretty eccentric. My uncle was a barber and he had an old barber chair in their den. Uh, he had a lot of, you know, he had a, they had an old piano down there, just really kind of odd uh, knickknacks. He collected a lot of really cool old stuff. Um, he had an old phone booth down there as well. Um, the kind you'd find more like in a, in a bar, not so it was like wooden. It wasn't like an outdoor one. Um, he claims that he got it at an auction. Um, and there was a, a bank of, in a bank of phone booths that were in the old LaSalle street train station in Chicago. And you know, you have to take this at his word. He said, he, he claims that you can see it because it's part of the movie North by Northwest was filmed there. So he claims that you can see the phone booth in the movie. And I mean, sure enough, if you look at the movie, those, 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 types of phone booths are in it i can't i (laughs) I wouldn't be able to prove to you if if that was one of them or not but but they're definitely in the movie um so i I used to play in it when we'd go to my 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 aunt and uncle's house it was my mom's sister and they were really really close so i play in it and i don't have any memories of what i would do when i was in it but it just it sprung to my mind so i called my mom the next day and i said hey you know remember that phone booth and she's like yeah it's still there she's still you know they still have it and I said, tell me about what I used to do in there. And she's like, oh, gosh, you know, what is that? How long ago was that? You know, I don't remember. You used to go and you play in it. Um, you know, you'd close the door and, and that would trigger like the light to come on. And there was almost like an exhaust fan. And she's like, you'd just go in there and you'd just play in it for, for forever, you know, and you loved it. And, and we no harm, no foul. So we just left, let, let you play around in it. And I was like, but did I say anything while I was in there? Did I? make believe did they do anything like that she said to be honest with you you sort of would go into like a almost like a trance you'd sit on the little bench in there and you'd you know kick your legs and kind of chatter to yourself and you know uh i say chatter you know just kind of talk and you know play and we just thought you were you know playing make believe um she's like but you wouldn't really do much of anything other than just sit in there and we just thought you enjoyed it now, and she's like, I'll, I'll, I'll ask your aunt. I'll tell you what I, what I come up with. And I'm like, okay, great. So um, a couple hours later, she calls me back and she says, um, I remember Aunt Nancy, we talked about it. You used to go in there and when you would come out, you would always tell these, um, you wouldn't, wouldn't really tell stories, but you would, you would say that you went to visit the puppy people. Um, and it sort of made my blood run cold a little bit. I was just like, oh, I, I wish I had memories of what I was doing when I was in there. Like, you know, what, what was I playing? What was I thinking? You know, did I, did, did something that I do open a door for them or something like that? Um, but yeah, she said there was a, I, I would, I would tell her about that. There was a puppy dog land and then I would play, I would visit the puppy people and uh, she's like, that's all you really ever said. You didn't have any details or any specifics or we just thought you was just a, you know, a little kid with a, with a vivid imagination. Um, so there's, there's nothing really remarkable about the phone booth. Um, I do have it, by the way, I, I'm, I bought it from my aunt and uncle. It's in my garage. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that, that, that kind of ties it together. And when I have told other people, they're like, I don't see what that has to do with anything. But to me, it, it definitely ties it together. It, it's where they came from, in my experiences anyway. It's, it's how they got to me. And I don't know how to explain that. And I don't, I don't know what that means to, to some people, but, but that's how I view it. I view it that, that going in there somehow created some sort of a, a link and so, so they could either watch me or, or, or I don't know, maybe they were, maybe it was just more of a playful thing, but, but um, that's, that's definitely the, the link that brought it all together. Um, and I, I haven't had any uh, quote unquote physical experiences since then, um, but I still do dream about them. Um, sometimes it will be a dream specifically about one of the experiences. Sometimes it will be a dream specifically about them. Sometimes it will be a dream that's completely unrelated to them, but they'll just be there. Uh, say, just say, for example, I'm having a, I have a dream about having breakfast with a relative, and one of them will be just sort of off in the background. Um, I still remember 
this is something I should have mentioned this earlier. I still re- can remember what they smelled like when they were in my room because that was the closest in proximity that I was to them. Um, and sometimes that kind of smell will just hit me a little bit and it'll just, it sort of gives me, you know, gives me the, the, the chills. Cause that's when I, I did have that slightly threatened feeling when, when they were there. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of it. <laughs> that's kind of, kind of all of the, all the specific instances, uh, in the, and the interesting, uh, phone booth story. Um, so those are my, those are my encounters. That's kind of it. <laughs> yeah, those are quite a few experiences. That's kind of a funny way to put a button on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's you know, like I said, I mean, I still get a lot of skepticism. I still get people that are like, "Oh, you were, you know, that this time was a dream. You were, you know, it was just some injured animal in the alley, and it ran away before you got a chance to get back there." And uh, the thing that you and Gary saw in the in the um uh, you know street was probably another injured animal, or it was a deer, and you guys were, you know, just having some sort of, you know, delusion. I don't know if that's, if that, you know, but uh, you know, I, I, I get like, I've, I've accepted the fact that not everyone is going to, is going to believe it and, you know, or be, you know, or, or even accept it. You know, some people are like, Nope, you're just, you know, they I've had people literally just tell me you're, you're lying. You're trying to get a, some attention or you're trying to get somebody, you know, you're trying to spook somebody around a campfire or, you know, but I believe it. And Gary saw one with me. So <laughs> I guess that's all that matters. <laughs> you know, it is though. Yeah. You're going to have people who believe you. You're going to have people who don't. But if they don't believe you, that's a them problem. Because yeah, you know the truth. You know they happen. These experiences happened. And that's all that matters. And I know from talking with you that you've already got that mindset. So that's a good thing. That's that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I uh, I believe it, you know. and. Uh, and that is, like you said, that's, that's, that's all that matters. You know, I mean, I have these, I have these memories. I mean, I can, I remember them, you know, some of them like they were yesterday, <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to gain from, from making things up in, in this particular instance anyway. You more than believe these experiences, you live them. So, mm-hmm. you know, they happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. I've got some good news for you, Dave. We've got some really good questions ready for you tonight. Great. Really good questions. The first one I want to throw at you is from Andres Carrizales. And And Andres wants to know how bad was the injury to make this dog me limp? See that I'm not sure of. I didn't I didn't get that close. Um I mean I was close to you know on the other side of the fence, but I didn't really see what the what the injury was. Uh and it was it was um it was less of a limb than more than more than just almost almost sort of incapacitated because it wasn't standing at all uh it was just sort of like you know like i said lying in the alley so i don't know if it was uh you know if there were more of them and one of them injured another or if um like i said unfortunately my grandmother didn't live in the in the best neighborhood so i mean <laughs> Who knows really what it could have hurt itself on in that alley. I know for the longest time there was an old junk truck back there. So, I mean, I guess it could have injured itself on that if it was back there, but, um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that, what actually caused uh, the injury that would, that, that made it incapacitated. It might've gotten hurt on the truck. Yeah. Some of the homies might've tried to let the wind out of the dog, man. You never know what could it, Exactly. You know, you know, you never know. That's right. Anything can happen in the hood, though. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. Well, we've got cryptid royalty in the live chat tonight. Al Santariga asked the next question. As far as cryptid researchers go, Al's right at the top of okay. cryptid researchers. I mean, this guy's been out there beating the bushes for a long time. He knows a lot about these guys from dogmen to Sasquatch to ghosts and other paranormal phenomena yeah this this man here really knows his stuff so it's really an honor to ask this question this question is dave the ones around your bed what color were their eyes um you know i i that it was like i said it was it was dim uh, in the room um there was there was definitely no uh, i know people I've, I've heard of people describing them as like you know almost uh glowing and uh, there was nothing like that um but uh 
I mean, I didn't, I didn't really see because it was, it was dim in the room. Um, I'm so, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have to say that they were, you know, probably just similar to, to a regular dog, you know, sort of like, uh, I mean, I have, I've got two dogs now. One of them has kind of a gold, gold color eyes, and the other one has, you know, just sort of a solid dark, dark brown, almost looks black. So uh, they were, they were dark. Uh, they weren't, you know, they, I, I, I didn't notice any, anything. Um, abnormal about them i should say uh nothing 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 that seemed supernatural like nothing glowing or backlit or anything like that so much time has passed between now and when this actually happened that you probably don't remember but i want to throw this out there for you anyway years ago i had a ghost experience in my bedroom late one night mm -hmm. i was laying there and all of a sudden it was actually new year's eve I was laying there and it was late. It was probably between two and three. And for some reason, you know how when you're laying in bed late at night and maybe you just turned off your lamp or something like that. Well, maybe five minutes after you shut it off, you hear the metal in it expand or yeah. maybe contract and you hear that. The clicking, right. <laughs> that, yeah. However you describe that sound, I was going to say clicking, but it's like a tink or yeah. however you put it well that's what i heard i heard a, I can't do it but i was laying there and all of a sudden tink and then all of a sudden this form this this shadowy like figure yeah. over by my bedroom door just appeared so i'm laying there and i'm blinking and i'm trying to make sure okay i'm not just seeing things i'm not dreaming and imagining all this well no it just everything i did to just poo poo it none, none of it worked it was right there right so i'm just laying there looking at this thing i'm afraid to take my eyes off of it because if i do then okay where did it go if i don't see it well i blinked and it was just gone yeah do you remember again like i said i know it's been a long time since that experience happened but do you remember ever hearing any kind of a tink or a sound like that before they appeared no no not 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 that time no uh because like i said i had I, I had laid down in my room and i turned off i didn't have a well i i, I shouldn't say i didn't have i had like a floor lamp in there but i just was just using the overhead lamp uh you know the that the ceiling lamp the ceiling light uh, and I turned it off, um, before I, before I laid down, but I, I don't recall, I don't recall hearing anything, uh, anything like that. Um, something must've woken me up though. Cause, uh, you know, I mean, uh, at that point I did have a dog, uh, but she lived outside. So she was, she was not, um, I don't think she would have been very happy if that, if she was in the house at that point. Um, but no, nothing, nothing along those lines or, or anything like that. It was just, you know, I was just sort of awoken by something. And then that's when I, it took me a moment to kind of focus because the light, the, the light was still coming in, but it was um, obscured. And the reason that it was obscured was because, of course, one was kind of standing in between my, in between me and the and the partially open door where the light from the rest of the house was coming in. Um, but no, no, none of the tink. The fact that something woke you up—that's one of the connections I was making between yeah. your experience and mine, because probably no more than no more than five ten seconds or so before i experienced that i was sound asleep and then yeah. something just woke me up it was weird it yeah. just woke me up no explanation for why i was awake now just something woke me up and then as i'm laying there trying to figure that out i guess that's when i heard the tank and then i see that figure over by the bedroom door mm. so yeah i was kind of wondering looking at the connections between our two experiences, if maybe you might have by some long chance heard that. No, no, nothing, nothing that I remember. But, but like you said, it was a very long time ago. I was in high school and that has been too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an old man. You're in your forties now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Closer, closer to 50 than 40. <laughs> old timer. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That's it. The next question is from Johnny B. And John wants to know, do you think that they're interdimensional? Uh, I've actually thought quite a bit about this um, because of the, the the connection with the phone, the phone booth uh, aspect of it. Uh, and the fact that um, that the one that we saw on the street uh, didn't, you know, felt almost, um, I don't want to say felt, but seemed almost um, 
not uh, physical, you know, not flesh and blood. Um, I think that that's a definite possibility, like that that the that the phone booth was something that was able to um, allow them to kind of come through, uh, or 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 maybe they don't even need that, but but that's what they used. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I, that's that's something that I have that I've considered and talked to, to to you know friends and family about. That I think that they're they're able to kind of move freely between different you know sort of planes of existence. That sure would explain their ability to do a lot of the things they do. So yeah, you're probably right. This next question is from Vanessa, whose question or questions I missed last week somehow. Her question is, any idea how the dogman got inside your house? Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a good question, too. And I think it kind of goes along with, with the last question, is that I think that they that, that they're, they're probably don't, at least the ones that I've experienced, don't really have those physical constraints. Like, they can just kind of kind of be where they where they want to be uh, which makes it a little bit you know a little nerve-wracking uh, because the other two were were definitely specifically outside um and then and these were were in the house um but yeah i think i think it was more like a uh you know they they wanted to to take a peek at me and and you know whatever they were observing or or looking for uh they that you know that's where i was and that's where they wanted to be so they just um they they created their own way in, I guess. Kind of a disconcerting thought, their ability to seemingly wink in and wink out of pretty much yeah. any place they want to go. Yeah. yeah, not good. Looks like D Truth is the next question for you. Truth wants to know, did Dave smell anything during the whole experience? The ones in my room, yes. Um, I can't think I mentioned that a little bit. Uh, sometimes I'll get uh, almost like a memory, you know, a memory of of that. Um, it's hard to explain though. Um, I mean, I, I've always had dogs and sometimes, you know, dogs get a little funky sometimes especially if they're dirty or they've been, you know, if we've been camping for a week and they're, you know, we're not really you know, bathing them regularly, but this was like a, a very musky smell, um, uh, much, much heavier than, you know, than, than, you know, what you, what you'd probably have on just like a, you know, a, a house pet or something like that. But, um, okay. I don't know, just like, um, like I said, just sort of a musky, you know, an, an animal smell. Uh, not, not like, um, it's not nauseating or anything like that. It's, it's just, you know, it's definitely like, if you smelled it, you'd probably be like, oh, that's, what is that? You know, um, kind of a heavy, um, to, so, well, this is going to be a, a gross thing. So <laughs> we had a, we had a, um, it's the only way that I can kind of explain it. We had a, a, a dog that always had to have its, um, you know, they have oil glands. So they had to have its, uh, its glands expressed because they get like blocked up and they kind of smell almost like a, there's almost like a fishy smell. It's kind of gross, but it was like that, but, but like heavier, uh, just almost like a, like a, like a, like a scent gland, I guess, but not, not like a, not, not like in a skunk way, but just a heavy kind of musky animal smell. Did that musty smell linger after they disappeared or did it disappear when they did? Uh, it was, it was, yeah, it was definitely there a little bit. And like I said, I can, I can remember it. Uh, and sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I can, you know, I don't want to say, oh, I mean, I guess it could be, I get a, a catch a, you know, catch a, a whiff of it, but then I'll ask, you know, I'll, if somebody's around, I'm like, oh my gosh, what does that smell? Do you smell that? And then people are like, no, I don't smell anything. And it's like, so I'm not sure if it's just like me remembering it and then, you know, kind of tricking my brain into smelling it. But, uh, but it did, it did linger a little bit in my room after afterwards. And I think that's why I was able to sort of remember what it smelled like because it was there for a bit. I think that if you have a smell like that in your bedroom, I don't think for breeze is going to do much good. No, right. Exactly. I mean, I was a teenager and you know, teenagers are kind of gross. So, but, but it, I don't think, I don't think I was that bad. Wait a minute. I wasn't gross when I was a teenager. <laughs> oh, you were, you're a better man I mean, than I. <laughs> maybe a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> I've got another question for you from Deed Truth, and he wants to know: Could Dave hear breathing either time? Um. Again, the the the, the time in my bedroom was was a long time ago, and I was kind of sort of shocked when I when I noticed them there. So I I don't specifically recall. Um, I almost think that I did with the one in in my grandma in the alley in my, at my grandma's house. I I. I 
feel like that was part of the reason that, that I that I thought it was injured, just because it sounded it sounded kind of injured. Uh, but I I could definitely hear the the motion of it pulling itself and you know kind of being in the grass and everything. But um, but you know I mean, there's there's nothing that I can like really pinpoint like that was breathing. I mean it could have just been the you know the kind of ambient noise of being being outside. And like I said, it was definitely summertime, so it was you know crickets and cicadas and you know it was that that, that time of that time of year. Um, but in my bedroom, no, I don't, I don't remember anything. And, and then, then the third time, uh, we were inside the vehicle while it was outside. So definitely nothing there. I can't remember a show we've done a live stream where we've had so many great questions. The questions tonight are just amazing. Such as this next one from Lil Lily Lewis. Lily wants to know, Dave, do you think that you were marked energetically somehow? Um, I have, I have thought that for sure, that there is a reason, some reason that I've yet to uncover, or if I ever do that, that they are interested in me. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, I've, I was, I'm honestly happy to be on the show because I thought maybe someone would have a, a similar experience and then could maybe share something like that. But, um, but I've, I've definitely, I've definitely had that in my mind before that there's, there's some, some reason that they, that they were interested, something that attracted them to me uh, when I was playing in the phone booth and that, and that made them want to be near me or, or observe me in some, some way or another. Um, unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have a, a satisfactory answer for that. I don't have a, you know, a specific reason why that would be, uh, but it's definitely something that I've, that I've thought. After having those experiences in the phone booth, I'm surprised you kept it in your house that you, <laughs> you took possession of it. I would think you'd want to get rid of the thing. But. Yeah. It's always, you know, I mean, it's always been, it, it honestly has been um, even, even, you know, with the, with these experiences, it's um, it's been part of a memory in my life that that was a really good, uh, a really good memory. I always enjoyed going to my, my aunt and uncle's house. I always loved being there with them. They were amazing, fun people. Uh, and so I always, you know, I mean, I just, just the, having it, um, not, you know, not only is it a, a kind of a cool nostalgia piece for me, you know, as a part of my childhood, but then it also does have this sort of, uh, you know, sort of creepy aspect. Uh, when I brought it here, I didn't tell any of my, my camping friends. And then they met us here one, one weekend getting ready to go. Uh, and my friend walked into the garage and he was like, um, is that, is that it? <laughs> and I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet he's like, okay, that. all right. Well, I'm staying away from it, <laughs> and, and I've, I've got a, a little note on it. I'm, I need to restore it. It's it's in pretty rough shape. Um, it's uh, it's it, they moved it to the garage uh, when they when they redid their their den, and so it's got a little bit of water damage on the bottom, and I need some TLC. But um, it's 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 going to come into my basement eventually. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 part of uh, part of my my growing up. It's 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 a good memory overall. No, I understand why you kept it. Yeah, that makes sense. I just might have done the same thing myself, being <laughs> sentimental the way we both are, apparently. Yeah. That's right. Candy Pierce wants to know, did the dog man's eyes glow at all? Candy, he already answered that for the encounter in his bedroom. Is that the encounter you're asking about or a different one? Please let me know. The next question for you is from Shaman, Shannon Umanazer. I'm sorry, Umanzor. And Shannon's question is, as an adult, has he been back in the phone booth and sat to see if anything happens? Um, believe it or not, even though I do have possession of it, I have not gone inside of it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I was curious about it, but I, I think that, uh, I think that I am also a little nervous. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I just, like I said, they're, they're, it's probably p fine, but, but I haven't, you know, I mean, I've, I've got some, there's some stuff, uh, some stuff stored in it. Um, like the packing material that I brought it from my aunt and uncle's house is, is in there and cause it was, I stuffed it so the, the door wouldn't flop around and it's got, he bought some replacement stuff for the fan, like a new motor and everything like that, that he bought years ago and never installed. So that stuff is in there, but, but no, I, I have not, I have not gone back into it. Um, I mean, other you know, with, with other than the fact that kind of like you know, reaching in to, to stack the stuff in there and kind of keep it, and when I when I put it in, in our truck to bring it over, 
Uh, but no, I, I have not. If I do and something happens, I'll, I'll certainly let Vic know <laughs> so he can update you guys. Yeah, please do. Hopefully nothing will happen, but if it does, yeah, I want to know about it. That's for sure. This next one is from Truth Iris, and Truth Iris wants to know, I'm wondering if Dave's experiences, I'm wondering if Dave experiences psychic flashes of events. Um, if you mean like events of the, you know, the experiences of, of these specific events, um, it will have uh, deja vu occasionally. Um, generally, like if I do like the, when that, when, when I'll have a memory of that smell that kind of hits me, uh, it will kind of, kind of take me back a little bit to that, to that specific experience in my room. Um, uh, if so, if that's what you mean, then, then yeah, I guess that would, I guess I would say that, that I will have that, but uh, to me, it's always, it's always just felt more like, more like deja vu, a kind of a deja vu situation, but, um, I experienced that, uh, a few times. Yeah. I figured you might've, it looks like we have more cryptid royalty in the live chat. Brian from red dirt cryptid investigations is joining us. Okay. He's another investigator who really knows his stuff. And if you haven't checked out his channel, his YouTube channel is Red Dirt Cryptid Investigations. Like I said, please do be sure to check it out. This next question is from Al Santariga. Al wants to know, did all the dogmen have... Huh, that's all you typed. <laughs> <laughs> that's strange. Yeah, if you can finish that up, Al, then I'll ask the rest of the question there. That's strange. Let's see. Okay, he finished it up later on by saying, question, what type of legs did the dogmen have? Oh, I love this question because I specifically um, remember, like, the ones in my room I couldn't see, um, but uh, the one in the street, um, it all, that, one, that one kind of made me a little, uh, it was a little eerie because when it stood up, um, it had, uh, it had, like, dogs, dog legs, like what you would think of, um, uh, you know, not like man legs, like, you know, or our hips straight down to our knee and straight down to the floor. It, it, they bent like a dog. Uh, they, they, you know, kind of went down with a kind of heavier thigh and then sort of bent, you know, sort of like backwards, I guess, what we, what we would think of backwards. So yeah, definitely like, uh, uh, like how a, how a dog's legs bend, not like a man. That is a good question. He's got another good one for you. He wants to know, Al Santarica, of course, is who I'm talking about. He wants to know, where were the ears located on all the dog men? Um, they were, uh, so I, I kind of liken it to um, like a uh, kind of a bigger dog. I had a, uh, like actually a husky uh, when I was growing up and how hers were like sort of like uh tall they were they stood up they were the tall but like um, not on the very top of the head but sort of like coming out from the side and then and then uh, you know standing up uh at, at that point um and they you know they can't like one i remember um the the ones in my room uh somebody drew it actually a really cool um kind of a comic book for me and they made them they, they gave them each different kinds of ears like one of them had sort of floppy ears and one of them was standing up and the other one was laying down but but the actual ones that i experienced had uh they were all kind of standing standing straight up but you know, sort of like kind of hard to explain. Um, like if you think of a Husky or a, a German Shepherd, how their ears are always kind of at alert. It was like that. I see. Well, the next question for you is from Ruth G and Ruth wants to know how scared were you and did it smell very bad? I'm sure she's <laughs> asked. She must be asking about that encounter when you were in bed, you yeah. answered the part about smell, but how frightened were you? Um, it was pretty scary. It was pretty scary. Like I said, it was, uh, it was more shocking at first just because I was, when, when I realized what was going on, when I realized that the reason that the, the light from the rest of the house was obscured because there was something physically standing there. Um, I, 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 I think I was nervous because just because it was just like, what's, what, what is going on here? Um, but, uh, I think I explained a little bit before the, the, the prevailing feeling was just sort of like a vague. Um, and again, I hesitate to use the word violated, but just a vague, like sort of like uneasy, like uh, feeling of being observed and just sort of being, um, uh, I guess like, 
I don't know if you ever, if somebody ever says something kind of off and weird to you and you just kind of get that weird feeling, you're like, what the heck is that? You know, like, that's kind of gross. Like, it just made me feel a little weird, like a little um, less, less scared at that point than more just like, I guess uneasy is the best term I can really come up with. I can understand why you would feel uneasy. Wake up and see something like that in your yeah, bedroom. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's going to get your motor running. We've got more cryptid royalty in the live chat. It looks like Jessica, the cryptid huntress, has joined us. If you haven't checked out her YouTube channel, please do so. Another one with great content. Looks like Al Santa Rica has the next question. He wants to know, Dave, do you have psychic abilities? Um, not that I could ever really, that I would ever like pinpoint. I mean, I wouldn't say that I can, you know, read anyone's mind or, or, or anything like that. Um, I mean, I'm pretty in tune with people's emotions. Um, I can generally, t you know, feel like when somebody's, if someone's, uh, you know, angry or upset and they're, they're trying to hide it, you know, I mean, some people are better at that than others. Um, but, uh, so, I mean, if that's, if that's kind of, you know, what you're talking about, I mean, I guess I would say yes on that a little bit, like, you know, more emotionally open to, to other people's feelings. Um, I'm definitely, uh, I have a lot of empathy. So like when someone's sad, I feel sad too. Or if someone gets elated on something, I, I, I share in that, uh, not just, um, you know, to the extent of where I almost can't help myself. So, so I guess maybe I do a little bit. Thanks for answering that question for us. We've got another one for you from Ruth G. And Ruth wants to know, did you tell anyone about your encounter or did no one believe you? Well, I've, I've told uh, quite a few people, um, you know, close friends and family. Um, you know, I remember um, one of the first times I told the whole story front to back uh, was uh, at, a, at a camping trip. And uh, it was my my husband. Oh, well, it was my boyfriend at the time. He said, um, Hey, you want you know, remember that thing that we saw? You know, tell everybody the rest of that stuff. He's like, that was kind of kind of interesting. So I told a group of people, and you know, of course, everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's so scary. And uh, so I feel like some people, you know, believed it, and you know, there were people that made a point to say like, hey, I really believe in this kind of stuff. And there were other people that just you know really didn't comment on on it. Uh, but I yeah, I've, I've told quite a few people. I was um, I, I enjoy telling it around campfires, like you know, uh, when there's new people around, not only for the to, to get people's opinions on it, but also, you know, just, to, you know, I mean, I, I, I enjoy storytelling and I, you know, get the creepy aspect of it. And, you know, you're kind of in the middle of the woods around a campfire. It can, it can, it can add that, uh, that extra little, you know, spooky to this, to the already spooky night. Um, but yeah, there definitely have been people that have, you know, blatantly told me, I don't believe that. I think, you know, either you're, you are mistaken or, or you're, you know, BSing me. Hopefully not people who've known you for any period of time, because yeah, if there are people not. who have known you for quite a bit of time, they should know better. Yeah. 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 There are people, you know, my, my, I think the, um, the, the what I, what I've gotten a few times are, uh, which, you know, it's, it's still kind of not necessarily a, I believe you. It's more of, I believe that you believe it. <laughs> Like I'm not saying that you're making it up. I don't necessarily believe it, but I believe that you ex you you know you you believe that you experienced this. So like you know an affirmation, but also with a you know a sidebar. <laughs> well, I can appreciate them thinking that for just the ordinary Joe Blow, but you're coming across as being very pragmatic and you think through probably almost everything. I don't think you just jump to conclusions about things. If these people, if they have known you for any period of time, they just must have a really bad, they must be really bad judges of character. If that's a conclusion they came to about you. Well, these, these are more like, you know, more, uh, extended you know friends you know maybe more acquaintances than, than my actual you know close friends my, my actual close friends are, are really supportive on uh you know of each other and of me and everything like that so these are just you know people that i've maybe told that i don't that aren't really in my in my close inner circle oh i see okay that makes sense i've got another one for you from jameson baloney sandwich oh man <laughs> A bologna sandwich. That sounds awfully good right now. 
<laughs> anyway, his question is, do you think they're a sort of necessary evil? Um, well, I guess that's kind of a, a difficult thing to answer. I mean, they must have some sort of purpose. Uh, I mean, I don't really know what it is. I mean, they, they even though they they were there and they were, uh, from what I gather, co sort of observing me and, and you know, potentially m almost certainly observing other people as well. I don't know what their what their purpose for being here is. So, uh, so you know, as far as being necessary, um, I'm not sure. Uh, and I mean, you know, I I I really don't know. I mean, I, I'd like to know what their purpose is. I'd like to know if you know what the if if they are if they are a, a, a necessity to us. Uh, you know, kind of the uh, behind the scenes, like I said, there's always something. I always, I firmly believe there's always, always something behind the shadows that we can't, that we can't see, and maybe we won't ever really know what their, what their purpose is. Yeah, that's a question I don't think we're ever going to know the answer to. So I agree. Marnie Clifford wants to know: Do you think dogmen choose a specific person to see them, or is it random? Um, in in my case, I think definitely I was I was ch more chosen than than random. Um, I mean, I can't really speak to uh, people that have had a more physical sighting, uh, you know, out in the wild. I guess you'd say. Um, but yeah, for for me, as far as I am concerned, um, I I do believe that that they were specifically interested in in either being near me or, or observing me in some way. So I think that that was, that was definitely, uh, I guess, um, I guess a, you know, more of a, a, a choice rather than just uh, a random selection. That makes two of us. I'm pretty sure it wasn't random either. So I agree. Now this question is one you definitely don't have to answer. It's totally up to you whether you answer this one or not. But if you decide you want to answer it, D-Truth wants to know, is Dave a believer in God? If so, did he call out or think about help from higher up? Um, that, that is a, that's a, a loaded question, <laughs> but uh, I will answer truthfully. I am an atheist. Um, and at the time, I don't really, I didn't really think of uh, anything um uh, other than you know what was you know right in my general vicinity, I wasn't thinking of anything like that. Um, now you know, saying that, I, I I do realize that you know it's difficult to to say. Um, you know, I don't necessarily believe in uh, you know in a quote unquote God, uh, but then they're all you know, the, the, but then also believing in some other you know supernatural things. Um, but uh, I, I I do firmly believe that there are other th you know, other powers and other uh, things out there um, that are, uh, you know, unexplainable. Um, but I was, I just, to be perfectly honest, I was never really raised with um, religion uh, in my life. Uh, and, you know, as an adult, as a, I, I you know, kind of did some research on it and, and, and just came to the conclusion that, that atheism is, is my belief system. If you're an atheist, at any time in your life, have you ever played with a Ouija board? Uh, I have, yeah. <laughs> Did you know that there seems to be a connection between people who have played with one and dogman encounters? Oh, really? I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I have... I'm sorry. Well, I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I have, I, 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 I have one from when I was a teenager. Um, that we used to that we used to you know play around with at parties and I, I actually still have it it's in my closet upstairs with, with the rest of my memorabilia from my youth wow still in the house <laughs> you'd be surprised when i ask dogman eyewitnesses that question it's been a long time since i've asked that question but for a while i would make a habit to ask that question when i would talk with a new eyewitness but you wouldn't believe the percentage of people who answer yes Yes, I have played with a Ouija board at one time. It kind of sticks in my craw, though. I mean, more times than I could shake a stick at, I've asked that question, and they say, no. No, I've never played with one. Wow. Yeah, so I didn't. I, I've time, never that. Then they'll qualify that by saying, well, besides the one time in high school, but that was only for like 10 minutes or whatever. 
Right. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that is playing with one then. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But there does seem to be a pattern, like I said. This next question is from Carol Hansen. And Carol wants to know, what made you feel the dogmen surrounding your bed were angry? I don't necessarily think they were angry. I just I felt I just felt uneasy um, just because of the situation. Uh, you know, just having them. You know, like I said, four four or five of them, um, just sort of observing. Um, I don't think they. I don't think they intended any harm. Um, but I think it was just the like I said, just the situation that made it made it kind of, I guess, scary uh, and and gave me that an uneasy feeling that that sort of um, the feeling of being you know, observed, like you see, you know, I mean, this is, you see like movies about people being abducted by aliens and they're being, you know, they're just all sort of standing around and watching. It's just sort of a, an odd, creepy situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think that they were angry. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what they would have done if they had been, <laughs> I might not be here to tell you the story. Yeah. If they were angry, I'm sure you'd know it. I don't think that would be a mystery. Like right. Ed. Denise C. asked a question that you've already answered. She wants to know, do you ever go into the phone booth anymore? If so, does anything happen? Well, Dave told us a bit ago, Denise, that he hasn't gone into it. He has stuck a leg in there, but he hasn't gone into it. The next question is from Ruth G. And Ruth wants to know, did the dog men ever growl at you? No, uh, not that I can recall. Uh, I, I, like I said a little while ago, I, um, in, in the, in my room, they were pretty silent. I mean, just a more of an, uh, you know, observational situation, um, than the, than the one in the street, we were inside the vehicle and he was, it was out. Uh, and then the one in the alley, um, uh, you know, other than potentially, you know, the, this, just the sound of it, of, of breathing, which I, I can't even really pinpoint. Um, it was more of the, uh, you know, the ambient sound of being outside, like the grass is moving from it, from it, um, pulling itself and being in the in the alley, and then just you know the out, outside sounds of the summertime evening. Um, but no, I don't. I don't ever recall a, a growl. Well, thank goodness they didn't growl. If they would have, that would have just stepped things up even more. It was already intense. Yeah. Andres Carrizales has the next question. Andres wants to know: Did you get any impression of age, like one seemed young or old? Um. Actually, it's a really good question because the one the last one that i saw um the one that was in the street that that uh, gary saw with me um did seem like it was older like it seemed because it was like the other ones had the like brownish or black darker fur um the ones in my room it was difficult to tell because it was dim in there but definitely darker color coloring and the other one was more of a kind of a gray um and it, just, it gave me the impression of more maturity, I guess I would say. That is something, that's something I haven't really thought about until you asked that question. That's interesting. <laughs> that was a really good question. Like I said, a lot of good questions tonight. Looks like D-Truth is up next and wants to know, have these experiences influenced Dave to not go into the woods? Not a bit. I camp constantly. We <laughs> We are... We are avid campers. We are always hiking. Um, uh, just lo love being outside. Um, you know, love uh, you know where we live now. Where we chose to build our house uh, in, in kind of in our neighborhood is obviously it's still a neighborhood, but it's still you know it's surrounded by woods. There's a wooded uh, trail that that cuts through our neighborhood. I actually I love being outdoors, and the, the woods don't don't make me nervous or or there's, I'm not deterred from going there uh, in any in any way. Um, so no, it's uh, it hasn't hasn't changed my my view on that at all. That's great. Yeah, as young as you are, it'd be a shame if you didn't go out and enjoy the woods and just live your life and do what you wanted to do. So yeah, yeah, that's music to my ears. This next one is from Cryptid Common Sense, and they want to know: Hello, David. Were there caves and or water sources nearby? Um, where I grew up, no caves. Uh, I grew up in Northern Indiana. So in Chicago land area, not too terribly far from where I'm at now. Um, but I've always lived near, uh, rivers. Uh, we live near multiple rivers now and where my grandmother's house was, um, just a few blocks away was, was a, a river. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, near my parents' house, there are a couple of ponds, 
uh, not not too far away, but um, nothing nothing like incredibly close. Uh, like I said, it was a few blocks away from my grandma's house, where the where the river uh, where the river is. Um, but yeah, no no caves, definitely. Well, they're found in a lot of places where there aren't caves nearby. They don't necessarily need them, but if they're in the area, they will seem to utilize them. <laughs> so something to keep in mind. Johnny B has kind of more of a general question. He wants to know, do you think that there is a war between dogmen and rakes? Eyewitnesses have reported seeing dogmen going after rakes and rakes fighting with dogmen. Maybe there is something to that. Maybe there is a war going on, but yeah, there's no way for us to know about that. All we can do is pretty much guess, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I had another question queued up. This one is also more of a generalized one. Alien the Pharaoh wants to know, is dog man a spiritual entity or a biological being? Well, yeah, that's a million dollar question. All we can do is guess as far as what the answer is to that. No way to know for sure what the answer is. So hope that answers your question. The next question for you, Dave, is from Nightscale, the Gaming Dragon. And they want to know, Dave, how smart do you think they are? Do you think that it truly wanted to kill and eat you? Um, I, I, I felt like they were pretty smart. Uh, you know, I mean, the ones that were in my room seemed more interested in observing, not harming. I don't feel like at any point I was in any danger. I mean, there obviously there was that feeling of vague, you know, uh, you know, uneasiness just because of the situation again, but, um, but I don't feel like I was, I was threatened in, in any way. I definitely didn't feel like they wanted to, to harm me. Um, like I said, it was just, I felt it was more an observe observation situation. It's understandable. You'd come to that conclusion because if they wanted to harm you, they had you dead rights. They, they sure did. I was nowhere, nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, we're coming up on the 70 minute mark and it has been a long day. I've been locked in here all day in the studio, so I'm going to get ready to call it. But before I do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? Uh, no, other than just th thanks for having me and, and uh, thank you to your, to your viewers and listeners. I mean, this has been um, a great experience. Everybody has, uh, has had such great questions. Um, some of them made me actually think about things that I hadn't thought about or, or, or have ideas uh, on these that that i hadn't even uh, considered before so just wanted to, to to thank you again for for having me on and it was a it was a, a great time i had a lot of fun well i'm glad you had a great time too i know i sure did also and yeah like you said the great questions tonight they just added to it i'm really impressed by those questions but Having said that, Dave, thanks again so much for coming on and sharing the details of all those experiences with us. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks again so much and have a great night. Thank you. Well, I can't thank all of you enough, nearly enough, for listening to the show, for supporting the show the way you do, for supporting the eyewitnesses the way you do. Thanks again so much for tuning in. And also, if you've had a dogman related experience, a sighting that is, and you'd like to speak with me about it, or if you'd like to come on the show and share your experience, all you need to do is just go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. And if you do that, then I'll be more than happy to schedule a phone conversation with you. But like I said, thanks again so much for listening and have a great night. <laughs>